There it is. Yes! Zero seconds left. Zero seconds. No time on the clock. <laughs> Last play of the game. That's a walk off. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's like. <laughs> <laughs>this episode is sponsored by cwhimp.com. Use my promo code that's good and you can get 10% off of your order now. This is only good for a short time, so use that promo code. Welcome to That's Good Broncos. I'm here live with legendary Denver Bronco Rod Smith. Corners had nightmares about him. Safeties never felt safe when he was on the field. Defensive coordinators literally wet their pants when they had to play against him. That's Today, not good for a grown man to wet them pants. No, not, <laughs> not at all. Today the Broncos played the Jaguars. They won 20 to 10. Uh, what did you see in the game that you liked, that you didn't like? What um, they got to improve on if they want to make a playoff run? You, you know what? I really started off sluggish. Uh, the third downs were a big eye-opener. Uh, I saw a lot of third and shorts and we're throwing the ball. Uh, to me, that's lack of confidence in the run game. Right. And I, I don't think we ran the ball well. They ran the ball. Jag Jaguars ran the ball fairly well. But overall, the defense and the offense and the special teams came through. They made some plays when they had to make them. And um, to me... Uh, it's the running game. I know it sounds right. weird coming from a receiver, but right. if you can run the ball, you can play action. We have some great weapons. Uh, I think the young guy did pretty good as far as Paxson. He did pretty good. Uh, he missed some guys that were open. He missed some bombs. Right. Some, some, uh, and he gets he gets enough time. He doesn't get as many reps, of course, as Simeon, but he gets enough reps to, to not underthrow them that much. Right. Those guys are big play guys. And they should have had three or four big, big plays in the game that would have, really, would have opened it up. Right, and that's kind of what Paxton struggled with in his first start was accuracy. So that's one thing that's a little bit concerning about watching him play. But today, uh, Devontae Booker scores a touchdown. Maybe Russell Okun should get credit for it because he <laughs> pulled Booker into the hey, end zone. Hey, do what you got to do. <laughs> uh, no fly zone. Uh, Roby, pick six. Chris Harris had an interception. I heard you cheering when Harris got an interception. Absolutely. You root for him because he's, he's undrafted. He's undrafted, man. Any, you pull any, for all those guys, Trust right? me, man. I'm undrafted. Here we are in my house. Had a yeah. great uh, uh, watch party today. And, uh, you know, to be undrafted and get to live the way I live. And, and Chris has done some great stuff for the organization. Yeah. In a short, short amount of time, he's been here in Denver. But him and his wife, they do a lot of stuff in the community as well. Great, solid young man. Right. Uh, and I root for them all, but I'm, I'm, I'm partial, partial to the undrafted guys. Capri Bibbs has some big yeah. runs. And I, personally, I want to see him get some more carries. You know, you know, CJ's out. He's undrafted. Right. So I'm, I'm partial to those guys because, you know, I, I understand where they were. And I, and I keep in contact with them say, listen, let them know that they made a mistake by not drafting us. Right. <laughs> so they go out there and they play very hard. I think, uh, I think a lot of that has to do with finding guys that are talented. You got Bibbs, you got Harris, um, these undrafted free agents on the team. I should look in to find the, the stat because I think the Broncos might have the most success with undrafted players in the NFL out of all the teams. Yeah, you, you know what, man? It's, you're hungry. You, you want to prove something to yourself, prove something to other people. Uh, and so that's what you want to do. And uh, shh, be quiet. Um, and so you, you want to be able to prove to, to yourself and other people that you were worthy. To, to have a chance to play in this league right. and you've got to go out there every single day and there's nothing wrong with the first round second round picks you know those guys have to yeah. prove they were worthy of those picks as well and you know Roby was a first round pick and he's doing yep. very well great made a great play today probably one of the plays that really turned it yeah. around um final question here honestly in your opinion who is a better quarterback John Elway or, Done. Bob, or Bobby Brister? Done. <laughs> you said John Elway anybody, I'm picking John Elway. I don't care who you pick. You can pick Favre. You didn't even pick, let me finish you with the joke. You can pick Montana. Joke. You can pick Greatest Ray quarterback Tittle. ever played. I don't care. Yeah, I'm Greatest going with John Elway. Ever played. Uh, not just because of his, his talent, his physical talents, and his, his smarts. And you can see his smarts now working in right. the GM role. But John is a great, great man, in my opinion. You know, he's a solid guy. And I got a chance as a, as a, as a pup in the, in the league. He was over there working out every day like I was. And, and, I'm, and he was in year like 11 or 12. You know, he's this franchise. He's, he's the entire state or this whole region right. uh, in the United States. It's John Elway kind of arena. And to watch him in there working out during the offseason like I was and hurting and sweating and pain and, and, and him doing it. And I said, I can never miss a right. day. 
And uh, in, in 14 years, I'm proud to say over 600 voluntary workouts I didn't miss because I had that example right there in front of me. And you know, some of, some of that is what I hope rubs off on other guys who want to make it in in this world, not just in sports, but in anything, in business, right. anything. You gonna have to put the work in, and you got to put the work in every single day. It's, it's it's pretty much like no days off when you're trying to be successful. Because you could have taken a day off with the the stature he had, right? Yes. Like he was in there grinding every, every day. day with everybody. Every single day. All right, another another close, grinded out defensive win for the Broncos. Uh, I'm Brandon Perna here with Rod Smith. And can you say uh, that's good Broncos? That's good. That's good Broncos. That's good Broncos. I would say that's great Broncos, but since it's his show, he said that's yeah, good. Broncos. I don't shoot too high. Exactly. <laughs> I, keep could, it in the I should call it that's average Broncos, <laughs> but whatever. When we get to the playoffs and go back to back, then you say that's great Broncos. Perfect. Perfect. Appreciate Very it. Up. Thank All you. Right, cool. <laughs> That's right. You just watched a post game with me and Rod Smith. Was I nervous? No. I acted like I belonged there. Just like the Denver Broncos defense shutting down Jacksonville. Only problem was Blake Bortles with his legs. Like I said in my prediction episode, he had one 22 yard touchdown run. Other than that, their offense did jack shit. I would give him more grief but the Broncos offense really didn't do anything either um, that's a concern still but uh, I think it's clear to see that Trevor Simeon is the guy to lead this offense moving forward at least for the rest of this season Lynch just he needs some time to learn that playbook I think if he settles down maybe that that'll help he had some accuracy problems today missed some big throws uh, as Rod mentioned <laughs> pretty cool to say that as Rod mentioned in my episode but I just wanted to take a second and close this video out. Um, the Chiefs won, which sucks, but the Dolphins lost, and that was almost more important than the Chiefs losing, because now the Broncos move back into that wild card spot, and right now, the Buffalo Bills are beating the Oakland Raiders 17 to nine. So hopefully, Buffalo, you, you can do it. Buffalo, you've thrown dildos on the field this year. You've taking shots out of girls' asses in the parking lot this year. Just go ahead and beat the Raiders. It's just as disgusting to play against the Raiders as all of that other shit you've already done. And again, you gotta check out my new sponsor, CWHemp.com. This is a big deal for me. CW Hemp is basically the sole reason That's Good Sports gets to stay alive for the rest of this season. Uh, they sell hemp oil. They extract all of the beneficial cannabinoids out of hemp, and I've used it for my back problems. It's great for pain management, uh, for a whole bunch of stuff. But you're gonna see CW Hemp in my episodes quite a bit, so check them out. There's a promo code, that's good. Use the promo code, that's good, or else it's like, I didn't even help you get there, and it'll get you 10% off your order. The Broncos had to win the game, and they won. That's all that matters at this point. Simeon has a his foot sprain. It's not an ankle. I said an ankle sprain. It's a foot sprain. Should be back next week against Tennessee. Uh, another must-win game. All the games are going to be must-wins for the Broncos moving forward. So get used to it. Get used to the stress getting back into your life. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Broncos. Make sure you subscribe here. Give me a follow on Twitter at Brandon Perna. And as always, give some love to the best Broncos blog on earth, Mile High Report. Do it now. Yes!